All right, folks, it's another Friday. Welcome. It's the 11th day of Ramadan throughout the Muslim world. We say Ramadan Kareem to all of you. Welcome to the last edition of uh, Journalist Hangout for the week. I'm Citizen Jones. Today on the program, armed bandits kill three abducted university students, uh, even as federal government admits that the death of Chadian leader Debbie, is, Idris Debbie that is, may worsen insecurity in Nigeria. Now, the NNPC rules that fuel price hike for the month of May even as refineries record 5.4 billion naira deficit. And later on, we'll share this with you. House of Reps probes illicit harvest. Take that very well. Illicit harvest, harvest export of 7,200 male organs and other human parts to China. Uh, that's crazy. I'm hanging out with Babajide Kolade Otitoji. Biko, you are thinking of Organa. Organs harvest. Yes. And not to talk all, about all organs. kinds of oddities in our world. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's and in the name of uh, poverty, whatever that means. Adekule Yusuf is also here. I greet you. Good afternoon. You, you think of organs harvest too? It's frightening. Think about it. 7,000 plus. Better, okay, then. Okay, then. We guide our loins. Oh, yeah. Mm. For, for these crazy times mm. ahead. So I have to guide our loins. Okay, the, the team is ready. I hope you are. All right, we go ahead. But, you know, for those who may want to join us on Facebook, the mailing address is at TVC News NG, at TVC News NG. Now, let's start the discussion today with attacks on policemen by some Nigerians. In a viral video that has sparked outrage, a young man harassed a policeman in Lagos and broke a bottle on the head of the police officer. Many people are saying this act should not be allowed to go unpunished. Let's share the video with you. I can't wait. GD looks like a crazy video. Even it's even if it's a horror video, poorly produced, we could have gotten something better. Slamming the bottle on the policeman's head. The, the disrespect that uh, people are according policemen is now a big source for concern. What the world could have uh, prompted this mad young man to behave in this manner? What, uh, what needs to be emphasized is that this fellow must not go unpunished. He should be fished out wherever he is. And I know that the police uh, are capable of fishing out this kind of uh, deranged individuals. You know? What, 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 what had gone but, over? But, but look at the pictures, because pictures were told don't tell lies. Mm -hmm. The people milling around are just watching, watching a show. Yes, some were trying to uh, remind him that, that the guy was dressed in a police uniform, while some others were goading him uh, to, to break the bottle on the head of the police, uh, police look, officer. Look at that, look at that. You know? The good thing uh, is that he did not even proceed to stab him to death. Oh, yeah, because he had a choice. The police commissioner in Lagos State has to fish out this individual and make an exemplary example out of him. We want to see him, we want to see him paraded, his face shown to the whole world, prosecuted, and sent to the slammer where people like yeah. him belong. Adekule, and the, the picture I'm seeing is that of a young man, not an old man. Yes, yeah. far, far younger than the police officer. You, you see, these days when I 
when I'm in the, in the newsroom, the reports we get, I get frightened. Mm. Policemen, soldiers, security agencies, uh, agents are killed every day. In one, M many of them every are day. No, even the ones that are reported. Mm. So when we collect news, and I get frightened. I think, okay, yesterday we have the report about this in social state. Another state today, tomorrow, every day, and I say, okay, what is, what, what is, what is really going on? Yeah, you know, part of the fallout of NSAS, you know, crisis, mm. people, people seem to just don't, you know, take, you know, fear anybody anymore. The kind of, you know, fear we so have. The uniform is not a deterrent anymore. Now today. It doesn't matter. Something who you are. government needs to do something about this. The way uh. they kill our security agents now, I'm always afraid. They do at little slightest provocation. Of course, you may say some of them do go beyond normal, you know, uh, well, outside the abuse of the law. But this normal. one, the picture no, I saw is not this normal. one. This one is doing his job. Was doing his job legitimately. Okay. You understand my point? Look, look, look there was one again that was carrying a gun recently uh, that uh, Son Wolu, you know, rewarded. Yes. The one was carrying a gun, all kind of harassment that took place, he didn't fire a gun. Mm. Mm. That's, that's totally different from the Confirm. image of policing that we know. So it's like, this is a, diff this is a mm. good example, you know, we want to see in Nigerian yeah. police. I, 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 I can't wait for what GDS suggested. We, I need to see the guy. You know, he must be. He must face. He, he must face. Yeah, remember the one who beat up a policewoman? Uh, the oh yeah, day. the last time. Yeah. And by yeah. the time they brought the idiot to a police station, he was. He had become. So, so he had become a dirty oh, yeah. a yeah. jelly. Mm -hmm. Just there, already <laughs> yellow, out of fear. And, if, and, and these the are funny, cowards. In the real sense, when they are brought to face the law, you yeah. start seeing a completely different person. Jellyfish. Extremely sober. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, we, we'll continue. Let's go to our big story, first big story for the evening. Mindlessness is the name of the game. Unbandied, unbandits, I beg your pardon, have reportedly killed three abducted students of the Greenfield University in Kaduna State. That's one of the private universities there. Governor Nasser al Rufai has condemned the killing, even as he admitted that evil would never triumph over good. Meanwhile, President of Chad, Idris Deby, is dead. That's official. But his passing may worsen the security situation in the country and the neighboring states, like Nigeria. Defense Minister, retired General Bashir Magashi, reflected uh, this way while we, you know, speaking with journalists at the State House of Abuja on Thursday. Of course, the situation is made more dire with the takeover of Chad by the military, who dissolved the parliament and suspended the constitution. Now, let's hear what the defense minister is saying in this report by TVC News uh, anchor Tai Amodu. The death of the strong man of Chad, President Idris Deby Itno, is admittedly giving the Nigerian government a lot of concern. The deceased leader had often led his men from the front against terrorists, scoring decisive victories. The last of such battles came for him against Chadian rebels who infiltrated his country from Libya a day after he was elected for a sixth term in office. Nigerian authorities believe the absence of his overbearing influence will cause an influx of refugees into the country, as well as arms and ammunition all the way from Libya. The issue of weapons and armament, we are also afraid of that. Before Chad is the buffer, stopping most of this uh, infiltration of weapons and the rest of it, now that is, it's free for all right from Libya down to Nigeria. It's very easy now because of the absence of the influence on Chad in that route. So we also have to take care of that and prepare our minds to it. I think we are on top of the situation. But the Minister of Defense assures that this will be brought under control due to the number of military activities Nigeria has in Chad. All the same, Nigeria will be tightening security at all its borders, particularly with Chad 
in order to prevent a situation where there is an influx of bandits and refugees. So security-wise, we are beefing up all our borders to ensure that refugees they don't flow into our country. Even Nigerians, I'm sure some of them would like to come back. We have to make ready, we must prepare for them and allow them to come in and refuse others to come because of the problems that will create. The defense minister also states his position on bandits, insisting that while he is of the view that nobody should be termed guilty until proven so, government will deal decisively with those threatening the peace of the nation. He describes the attacks on police formations in the southeast as an affront on Nigeria's security architecture that will no longer be tolerated. Major General Mugagashi is optimistic that this insecurity across the nation will be brought to an end very soon. Tai Amudu, TVC News, Abuja. All right, that's Tai Amudu's report. Uh, Jide, we are in dire straits. We are. We are. Everything the Minister of Defense said. I had said on Tuesday and uh, Wednesday in the aftermath of the death of the um, judge and leader. It, is because it or killing? <laughs> it's the death, uh, well, the killing, hmm. death, the same thing. He went to the front line as he's always done hmm. and he did not return alive. Uh, so oh the, the truth is Chad borders Libya, a okay. country in the, north. in the north. That's a country that long had territorial Wahala. designs okay. about um, okay. about Chad. Remember during the Gaddafi era, Gaddafi wanted to annex Chad and yeah. Libya. You know, okay, yeah. it yeah. has extensive borders in the north with uh, Chad, with Libya. with, with, with uh, uh, Libya, yeah. and then of course. In the east, it borders Central African Republic and Sudan. Okay. Then in Niger uh, it borders Nigeria in the west and Cameroon in the south. In south, yeah. Now, yeah. all of those countries that I listed, there is not one that, in my view, is not a fair state. There is violence in in those uh, those countries. Look at Central African Republic. Mm. Look at even uh, North Burkina Faso. So much trouble in those places. Look at uh, Niger. Niger is a failed state. There are many parts of Niger where no one seems to be in charge. We, we hear bandits, bandits roam wild. And the bulk of the illicit weapons coming into Nigeria come in through Niger Republic mm. because we share extensive land border I'm, with I'm Niger Republic, cutting across uh, uh, no less than six states, from Kebi in the northwest to Yobe in the northeast. Yes, yeah. Look at that distance. Now, in the case of Chad, our land border is, uh, is a very short one. It's not more than 40 kilometers. But because it shares extensive borders with Libya, it is a threat because of the huge number of, uh, of uh, uh, jihadists mm. and the possibility of bringing in weapons. The bulk of the weapons that Boko Haram uses are coming from Libya. In fact, you see sometimes when Nigerian troops arrest Boko Haram fighters, you see that some of the weapons recovered from them are not uh, from my own inventory, you even see NATO written on some oh, yeah. of them. So we, from that, you will know clearly that these were weapons that NATO distributed to rebels that joined them in, 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 in fighting Gaddafi at that time. Yeah. Now with nobody in charge, with bedlam all over the place, all the, those uh, fighters uh, and the are looking to the sell borders. their weapons. Oh yeah, yeah, they are looking to sell their weapons. Mm. You know, in a, the black market uh, for for illicit weapons is thriving along that corridor. 
This was the, the person who, who served as a kind of buffer, blocking them from coming directly from Chad to, to, uh, to I mean, directly from Libya, Libya to Chad to, and straight yeah, to Nigeria. Yeah. The people bringing illicit weapons go through Niger Republic. Not S directly. Circumventing yes. They Chad. come in once they get to Njamena, they, they then go to Niger Republic and then come to our country. So, so it is true, Niger. Ben, Debbie, uh, Idris Debbie, bless his soul, uh, may have been like, like, um, a kind of uh, saving grace for yeah, us, yes. Because yeah. he, that was why his death actually devastated the president. You know, the pres president for to some of the people who are close to him, they said he was devastated of the day because this man, you know, of all the leaders in this area, no one had shown the zeal to exterminate terrorists the way. Idris Deby has yeah. done. He, yeah. he sent his troops all the way to Mali, sent his troops to Northern Burkina Faso, everywhere yeah. that he, these guys are, yeah. he showed his zeal to finish them off. And then even within the multinational joint uh, task force, he is the leader, or he was the leader who provided the most support to Nigeria. Remember in 2015, he sent troops to Nigeria, and a lot of those local government but no not that were assigned to Chadian mm. troops, they recovered mm. before the 2015 election. Yeah. I hear some people say, oh, that he provided uh, uh, refuge for Boko Haram fighters. Some uh, gossip mongers and uh, totally ignorant people, they say that on social media. Mm. But that's not true, because the bulk of Boko Haram fighters are on our own soil. We have to deal with them here. This is where majority of them are. This is where they control uh, a lot of uh, 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 communities, not yeah. in Chad, because he flushed them out. Yusuf, then Idris Debi was an open, open, uh, or do I call it an enemy for, for friends of Boko Haram, if you see what I mean? Uh, yes, you are right. And uh, don't forget that uh, even in his own country, um, the, 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 there was the local insurrection he was facing. So as he was facing international terrorism, mm -hmm. he was also battling local you know, in, battles. Internal, wow. So he was a warrior all through. So he came, he, he died the way, or let me say he left the way he came. You know, if he also he just he also gunned his way into power. Okay. Before he, before he came to power, the local you know issues were there, so fighting ever since, and uh, being a very strong man. Yeah. So uh, yes, very strong. So he was like the proverbial you know cat with nine lives. Nine, he was yeah. always surviving. Uh, and again, quickly, <laughs> with the military in Chad suspending the constitution. Uh, dissolving the, the National Assembly, mm. it's all bedlam. No, yes, it's all bedlam, and uh, all thanks to the you know international. Uh, uh, what, what, what do I say? Uh, maybe hypocrisy, or, mm. or because when you look at the way the whole matter is framed, nobody wanted to call it coup, mm. but that is what it is. You understand me? Mm. You see the way Nigeria reacted. You see the way international. You know, community reacted. France, big countries, the way they reacted. So, when you look at the constitution of Chad, then what happened in Chad is a travesty of democracy. Mm -hmm. The constitution says, when this happens, the speaker takes over yeah. for a certain number of months, and this happens, and this happens. But when this, when you know, Debbie, you know, mm -hmm. died, what happened? The military took over. So it was, it was an institutional coup. Okay. You will see that even the local rebels, they denounced it. They said, no, this is an institutional you know, coup. If you look at international community, France embraced it and provided reasons. What was the reason? They cited security situation. Okay. So these are some of the, uh, these are some of the double standard in international, you know, uh, politics and, so. politics and uh, mm. when it comes to Africa, and it also shows that for most parts of Africa, what we have is really not democracy. Okay. You have, yes, we have, you know, uh, impunity, you have uh, 
fragile democracies yeah. that anything in, can just some, happen any day. In some cases, like then, in Chad, yeah. meritocracy. When you look at Central Africa, look at several countries around West Africa, you know, even some of their neighbors just survived coup recently and all that. So mm. you realize that in Africa, we are still not yet there we're when it comes to democracy. So we're in Africa, we're a long, long way from mm. home. Yeah, exactly. All right, you did, uh, the uh, defense minister, Magashi, retired was not wrong in saying the country is bleeding. So let's go to Kaduna State, where six students of the private university have been killed by kidnappers. Mm. There's still Wahala in the land. There is so much uh, problem, so much Wahala to grapple with. I can use your word. And um, remember, he said that Chad has been one uh, strong um, country stopping the infiltration yeah. of weapons into our country yeah. you know uh, he said a lot of uh, that if there is no security in chat there will be a lot of trouble for all neighboring countries that's, Ni that's nigeria, minister yes saying. and nigeria will be the worst hit by his absence he said that uh, clearly because this is the man who had always helped us he had always helped Cameroon as well because in 2015 he sent troops to chase Boko Haram out of Fotokul, another yeah, part of yeah, northern yeah, Cameroon. Yeah. And the border, border area. Yes, yeah. they successfully decimated Boko Haram in northern Cameroon. In fact, uh, Cameroon does not face the threat of Boko Haram uh, uh, that it used to face yeah. anymore. Yeah. Now, the danger is there are, there are too many illicit weapons coming into our country. And it is that area, it is through that area that they come in. When you see Boko Haram doing his best to shut out Nigerian uh, military from many parts of Bordeaux North, that is the area. This area, the, the border the, with the Chad, Chad, the border with Niger Republic in Bordeaux State are in Bordeaux North. So, and that is the area that they don't even want us to control. Because if we control that area, they won't be able to bring in supplies of weapons yeah. and even fighters. And, and, they're, and fighters they're from Mali long, and, the long the war. and the rest. So, so now, he is worried that these weapons will continue to come in. Now, what do the bandits use? The bandits thrive on... Uh, these weapons, if they have no access to illicit weapons like AK-47, AK-49, the GPMG and SMG, mm. they would not R be able to operate. That is what well. gives them their own strength. Yeah. And now, you can see what they are doing in Kaduna now, moving from one school to another. They have killed three, uh, three of these boys, and we hear that even the women amongst them are being raped. Mm. That is what uh, one of my sources told me today. That that, and they are insisting that until their demand is met, which is 800 million, that they will continue to kill 800 those children. 800 million what? 800 naira. million naira. That's what they're asking for. And you know this kind of money is only government that can pay this kind of money. And we have a governor in Kaduna who has made it clear that, look, he is not going to pay ransom. So they are trying to force the government to take action either by inviting them uh, mm. uh, their agent for negotiation and paying uh, ransom on these guys and the yeah. is not ready so, to negotiate uh, uh, is not ready to do that but they also imagine that maybe the federal government will get involved after all the school we had those 39 uh, yeah. students who were kidnapped yeah. the other day yeah. it's a federal government oh. uh, school so this is a kind of a uh, war of attrition between the governor and these bandits who appear to have targeted his state. Even when I was yesterday, we were saying, Look, Kaduna appears to be targeted, but the commissioner was citing uh, neighboring states. That's not what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. When it comes to schools, in the last couple of months, schools have been raided in Kaduna state more than more any than part of yeah, Nigeria. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. There is a desire on the part of these guys to frustrate the governor because he made it clear that he will not negotiate with them. Mm. Kaduna is not the only place where we have schools. We have schools in Zamfara. We have schools in Kaduna, I mean in Kasina. So how come is Kaduna schools that they've been attacking? Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's, it's a kind of uh, attempt to blackmail the governor and force him 
to, to, to eat his words. But the truth is, now the families of these guys will then have to negotiate with these people. The governor said he will arrest anyone who uh, negotiates. They are not going to listen to him. Mm. Lai lai. Their children are there. They are not going to fold their arms and watch their no children <laughs> being violated but, but, by, but by this. But we have somebody with him, but then it's like a catch-22. We'll come back to that. Chief Michael is reaching us from Abuja. Chief, I greet you. Good evening. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is uh, Chief Michael Joshua calling from Abuja. You are on. Um, I want to come. I salute Baba uh, Chief that is over the end of the day. Okay. And um, the other uncle man there, and also the other person that you did. And I want I, to quickly, I, you, I want to quickly contribute on the issue that we are discussing about this banditry. Actually, I am from Niger State, a near local government. Mm. In okay. fact, in our we are yeah. oh, yeah. the go, mm -hmm. the bandits chase. Yeah the military yes. in a place called Zadaga, that is my own. I want you to do, to give help us because now in, in my local government, the all areas in that place have been surrounded by bandits. As I'm talking to you now, for over one year now, I have not been able to travel to my local government because of fear of being kidnapped or being killed by bandits. Yeah. Chief, Chief you, are now, not, you, are, you are not alone. I will run from the village down to the Muya local government, which is circuit power. Now the issue is this. Now that these people are chasing people out of the village, this mm. place now okay. is the local government headquarters. Th thank you. We, 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 we heard you first time. We heard you, Chief. Chief. Uh, we'll go on this commercial break now. We'll return to take on the issue home. Please stay. Okay, then, we're, we're still in Kaduna. Adekunle Yusuf, um, Governor El Rufai of Kaduna State cannot be said to be doing what is wrong because if you negotiate with one kidnapper, you must go the whole hog. I, I may be wrong. That's the way I'm looking at it. You said we're in a catch-22 situation. Catch-22, or the, what they call Hobson's Choice. Yes, that's where we are. So if anybody is telling me you don't want to negotiate, okay, if your child were to be one of those to kidnap, what would you do? No, no, you would but preach. Governor Rufai had said if his, one of his children could be a victim. Is easy to talk. Is easy to talk. Is easy to talk. When you are faced with this kind of situation, believe me, morality... Would, would, you, would you negotiate with a kidnapper? When my, if my child is one of them, I will happily do. Because anything that will make me to, you know, get my child out of you I know will do it. i will do it i will, do it. I will not care I will do it. whatever I will do it. and the governor is saying see anybody myself. that anybody that negotiates with you know our kidnappers is going to is going to arrest them and going to deal with them who happen what kind of governor is that this matter most of it you don't have to say you know to the media mm, or to the public yes. many things you have to penetrate and do you yeah. must get those children out whatever uh, are you saying governor el rufai is rather vocal he's talking too much it's talking too much. you share that sentiment? There are some things uh, being said publicly that you shouldn't say publicly. Okay. You can keep your intentions to your heart. What you are going to do. It's just like I say to my friends in the army, for example. Some postings in the notice you announce. Some plan of a military campaign you announce that you are coming and you expect them to wait. Mm. <laughs> the, but you expect the terrorists to wait to be killed. <laughs> you don't have to say certain things. Catch the enemy by surprise. Mm. You know? The surprise, surprise, is, surprise the is still the number one of all the principles oh, yeah. of war. Yeah. Surprise remains number one. Boko Haram surprised Chadian soldiers and they killed 90 in one day. That was what forced Debbie to lead the, the assault. Yes, against Boko Haram. So, 
keep your intentions to your heart. It's not everything that you say. G I good, agree good with him. Just good, good. Hold on. Mm -hmm. Good intentions does not uh, do not harm anybody. Good intentions. No, it's talking good about intentions plan, plan. does not <laughs> always have to be advertised. <laughs> Talking about plans, especially plans. when you are dealing with these individuals, you know how to advertise mm -hmm. your, your, your plans. Your, your plans. Keep, 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 keep it in your heart. You will not negotiate, but you don't have to be the one shouting mm -hmm. about it because it is clear now. And I said it a long time ago that it looks because in the past they were not attacking schools in Kaduna State. Yeah. But in one week, we saw them going after like three schools. I mean, that's that's unusual. So. What, what we are saying is, look, we support the idea of not negotiating with these guys. Yeah. You understand? Mm. But you can actually execute that desire without necessarily announcing to the whole world yeah. that you don't want to negotiate. They will see that you have frustrated them by your actions. But you don't have to say it. That's the thing. Now, when you say it and you are saying that they've, they've uh, lost their rights, to live and all that, mm. you are provoking them. And when you are provoking them, it's the innocent people that they mm. are going after. Oh, yeah. My own point is, negotiating with bandits is such a bad thing. I don't want it myself. But the alternative is to protect our people, ensure that they cannot even uh, kidnap our people. Oh, yeah. When you are unable to protect our people against kidnapping, <laughs> then you must do whatever is necessary to uh, get them out of the den of the kidnappers. Mm. For now, we are okay. able to do that. We are powerless okay. against them. The military is powerless. The, the, the police, powerless. Mm. Even police so will sometimes advise you to go to and negotiate if you want mm. that person to come back alive. That is where uh, we are. Okay, then. How much longer are we going okay, to continue? Okay, then. Um, it, it doesn't just go for Governor El Rufai of Kaduna alone. All other governors who are chief security officers of their states. Please, if there's a counter plan, Keep it to yourself. I, I, I buy the sentiment mm -hmm. that the number one choice in taking an offensive against the enemy is surprise. Surprise the limits. Okay. Let's go to our next story. You know, the speculation of a possible hike in the pump price of petrol has been on millions of lips for many moons on end. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, insists there would be no hike in fuel price for the month of May 2021. We can report that three refineries in the country guzzled some 5.4 billion naira in overhead expenses on zero output. As we sit here, this co the, the, the cost is still very unclear, uh, uh, Yusuf. You, if you look at all the reports, and these reports are from the NNPC. So it's not that an outside auditing firm, you know, conducted. So over the years, the last four, five years, our refineries, the fall of them, have become what people call drain pipes. Mm. Nigeria keeps spending billions on them. They call it maintenance. You pay salaries of people who work there. But 90, over 90% 90 of our daily uh, petrol consumption, we take, you know, we import from abroad. Mm. So it's not a funny thing. It's a very, very sad, you know, situation. And year in, year out. This time around, look at the figures. If you look at last year, every quarter they bring out you see the deficit and you see the ones the money they spend again to maintain those refineries at some point i needed to ask why are you doing turn around maintenance, maintenance. for dead in, in whose interest <laughs> then i said oh that those things will become you know they are bad now they go from bad to worse and all that so they need to keep them or keep them mm -hmm. running what would Oh, no, they are not producing what they are meant to do. So even when they work, all of them, they've never gone beyond 5% you know, capacity. capacity. Mm. And all of them put together, they are to do 450,000 barrels, 200 barrels daily. daily. 
daily, which by now, if assuming they operate at you know full Optimum. capacity, yeah, if you need fuel abroad, maybe very little, but they are not, and the government keeps spending money. If you look at the figures last year, if you look at figures 2019, if you look at figures 2018, so we. And you know the biggest irony? The one that was done recently, signed mm -hmm. hmm? okay. for the one in Port Harcourt, you know, against the public outcry. All right. The government went ahead to still do it for a refinery that is not productive. Chidi, you know, at least for the month of May, we can heave a sigh of relief. Yes. There won't be yeah, hiking prices. <laughs> no, nobody knows what goes beyond there. <laughs> Yeah. Or, or it leaves so much to be hmm? we just conjecture? Yeah, we just we just um we we, we can keep um, guessing and making hypothetical statements about what lies and wait for us. Oh come on, come on. Um, <laughs> the the truth is I've been asking myself how much longer can we keep the subsidy regime going? The government knows that it will walk straight into a climate of heat mm. if it suddenly increases uh, the price yeah, of petrol. At the rate we're going? Because petrol, as I've said repeatedly, is a security product. It can even bring down the regime. If you do not manage this sort of thing um, very well. Yes, carefully. Nigerians are impoverished already. It, there is a big uptick in inf inflationary uh, trend in our country, and that will be worsened by the removal of foreign subsidy. For so long, government, uh, the National Assembly didn't appropriate money for subsidy, but NMPC continued by itself to pay subsidy, <laughs> simply netting off the cost of subsidy from crude oil sales. Who appropriated money for subsidy? No one. NMPC was just doing it. Is that accountability? No. Where else do you think this can happen? That you simply take money on budgeted for or uh, unappropriated simply to pay S and it's such a huge of Nigeria. Yeah, it's such a huge sum of money. Mm. While deceiving people, making people believe that oh, subsidy no longer exists. But on the average about it's about one hundred and three million now by the figures of March. One hundred and three billion that we are spending on subsidy. NMPC took it upon itself. To simply, and they didn't call it subsidy. You had the former uh, Minister of State calling it all sorts of funny names mm -hmm. under recovery. You mm -hmm. can't deceive people. You are, you are, the subsidy regime is very much alive. You are paying subsidy at a huge cost, but calling it some funny names under recovery. Let me take you to task a little. If we stop the regime of subsidy, what yes. happens? People will pay so much more for 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 for, for the for, pay, product for the product. Yeah. And then apart from that, the GDP mm. of our country will be grossly affected. Okay. You know? At what point will market forces come in? No, once is once uh, subsidy is gone, market forces take over. The way things are now. You are still fixing prices. That was what I should not be. Yes, NMPC is still uh, PPMC is, is uh, PPPRA is yeah. still fixing prices. If uh, subsidy regime is gone, it has no business fixing prices. Yeah, you know, it is still fixing prices. It almost even increased fuel prices the other day until NMPC said, "Oh, this thing can't be done by fiat. Everybody, all stakeholders must come in to decide to mm -hmm. remove." Mm -hmm. And the president has the final say. 
because he knows that the blowback will be terrible. So the president uh, said, no, uh, you can't, you the can't, remove, of you can't resources. remove it at this time. Uh, I, I, I declare, as we take this home, let's look at the refineries. Why spend an extra cobble on a horse that is dead? Uh, well, maybe those in government may be able to explain this. This five point something billion deficit is just for three refineries, the one we are talking about mm. now. For the month of, uh, I mean, December 2020, according to NMPC. And it's just operating cost mm. for three of the four refineries for one month. So, people in government, Sorry, why they where are, does the money go to? There's no way I'm, you put, I'm pretending no, I don't a refinery know. Receive, that's, that's you know. It's a gigantic, you know, structure. Yeah. You have, you have hundreds, you know, thousands you of people mm. working there. Yes. And it works and they pay them hours. heavily. Believe me, when I say it works 24 hours, I'm not saying it produces, you know, but they what, go to it, work. what it is meant to produce. So, <laughs> you cannot abandon it. I visited Ajakuta, uh, Ajakuta, you know, steel, you know, mm -hmm. company. And when I go there, I was shocked. I said, but that the, the staff the, are still on the a salary. The people are still there. They are the collecting their salary. They, they are there. They have to be there. Ah. You understand my point? So they, they say we're Delta Steel that, Company. That, that is one you thought we always say it's been abandoned for so many years. Now we are talking about refineries that are not abandoned, mm. but they are not productive. Because people are drawing salaries. So people are taking salary allowances. People are going on leave. People are going on retirement. You are, you are replacing people. Mm -hmm. Believe me, uh, those who are to man mm -hmm. to man several you know sections, they have to be there. If not. People will call me still gigantic, you know, machines. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll stop it there. So, so GD, have we'll you know the salary structure of people in NNPC? It's not, it's not what others. It's not. It's not you can't compare, compare to other you other people in there. the public yeah, service. You want to make a begin go NNPC, <laughs> NNPC, CBN, DMO, all of those places. Yes, that's not what a teacher ends. Our business here is to mold opinion, allow you, the viewer, to make up your minds. That story <laughs> is served. Take your decision. We'll go on this commercial break and return. Please don't <laughs> go away. Okay, then, our last story for the evening. You know, organ procurement, also known as organ harvesting, that's crazy. It is alive and well in our country. It's human trafficking by other means. Nigerians, some say, uh, are doing it as a result of poverty. And they had been indulging in this illicit, illicit trade for so long. A shipload of 7,000, please get it right, 7,200 refrigerated male organs <laughs> were found in 36 boxes labeled as plantain. That's all good. Mm. At Shanghai Port, also known as Red Market, this was recovered re recently, and that's in China. Now, the Nigerian House of Representatives moved to probe the illicit trade yesterday. When something unlikely is witnessed or known, the truth of its existence can no longer be doubted, Jide. Yes. Organ uh, uh, um, harvesting. harvesting. Mm. Organ harvesting. Um... Some people uh, think it's just driven by poverty. But that's because we have not thoroughly investigated what happened. That could be the poverty of the mind, though. No, 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 no. In this case, in this case, a lot of these people are probably victims of uh, kidnapping. Oh, really? Victims of kidnapping, taken to um places where you have hospital equipment mm. murdered and then their organs harvested because the truth is if they are to be used maybe for transplantation and all that mm. then it has to be harvested from a living person once the person okay. is dead the tissues are dead so the organ is not useful anymore it's like a, a person on um, a life support. 
just before that person breathes his last, they could decide to take an organ, you know, Say uh, a from kidney. the body, a kidney or, or, or something else, mm. you know, that they will now use. Some in the U.S. and the U.K. or other places, people even before their death, they they As uh, a death leave wish. an instruction that look, mm. once I'm dead, allow my cadaver to be used by medical students, by people who need so, 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 and so, you know, mm. uh, stem cell for stem cell research yeah. and all that. So in this case, because this uh, business is illegal, chances are that these organs were illegally procured. Okay. Because if, if we are saying, okay, because they mentioned penises, male reproductive organ. You are not going to give up your male reproductive organ because you are poverty stricken. Nobody, nobody does that. It's not like your, your kidney. Yeah. The, every human being has two kidneys, but you actually need one to survive. With one, you can survive. So people can sell their kidneys uh, and, and still get by. Uh, uh, yes, some, but some, some, some give, up, give up one eye. But talking about the male, male genitals, yeah, I don't know anyone who will be so poverty stricken as to then give uh, allow away. his his uh, instrument to be sliced off. Uh. For what? No one does that. So my own feeling is possible that these people because we even don't know if if they were refrigerated we don't know whether mm. they are meant to be eaten in some restaurant uh. in china because for the chinese don't put anything beyond them they can eat anything we've, we've seen chinese eat cockroaches we've seen chinese eat frogs we've seen chinese eat toots all kinds of you things they, they can are eat they are perhaps oh, no it doesn't matter that is the truth we can produce videos of them eating cockroaches you know now could these uh, reproductive organs have been sent there with the intention of um serving them as delicacies in oh, some restaurants. No, no one knows. Yeah. No one knows. We are just imagining now because I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly what this is. Or maybe in the fullness of time, <laughs> with greater, uh, with some le level of investigation, we will be able to know the reason. The, the, I was going, this. going to draw the attention because of Adekule Yusuf. If it was simply to, kidneys, to, to you know, your, ima your imagination. His imagination. He's imagining too. <laughs> <laughs> Delicacies. Seven thousand two hundred pieces. Well, but it's really a big crisis in China. I think last year or year before the last, they did a, there was a tribunal in China over mm -hmm. forced organ harvesting. They call it organ theft. Organ theft. Yes, in China, it's a big national crisis big business that the country. To, the, yes, the country had to, you know, come up with a tribunal, and the judgment of the tribunal is terrible. That is, and it's still ongoing. It's still going on. So, what people have not been able to really go to the Into, you know, to the root of the matter. What, what is driving this? I believe it's the madness. Organ harvesting. Yes, mm -hmm. for organ theft. Just don't stop. You seen kind words, organ theft or forced, I mean forced organ harvesting. Uh, have you have you had prisoners too? People in prison. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when you see when you see kidnappings in Chinese in Nigeria, that they do that for when prisoners. you see increase in kidnappings, the ones you cannot trace. You know many people just got missing, mm -hmm. and they come everywhere. They don't eventually don't get them. So many of them do end up in this kind of you know, oh unlock, you know, unpalatable situation. They harvest some of their parts, and then when you harvest up to 7,000, you know, male organs, export paid to you China. Mm. Believe me, that is it's a big deal. It's a lot. It, it's it lot. crazy. 7,000 is We are not talking to. about 100, uh, 10, we are talking about 7,200. Where did they get all of that? So, ah. so when you look at the rate at which people get missing, this, those who are into occultist, uh, mm. occult, mm. occult, that they do all kind of, that is what, mm. you know. Uh, 
G G now the House of Reps has stepped into the into the ring, so to mm. speak. Mm. Uh, what what do you expect? Where do no. we go from here? No, it, the, as media people, we hold it an obligation to press hard and ensure that this does not end up like just any any, of, any uh, investigation. Yeah. The Chinese government must be prodded sufficiently to continue its investigation and let us have the results. Who are the Nigerians who facilitated the harvesting of 7,200 uh, could, could, could could We need more? to know them. Mm. It must suggest that there is a big business here. Yeah. It could there be a place where uh, maybe uh, human traffickers just gathered people, you know, and then decided to, to, to take their lives and, and sliced off their, their penises? We need to know the people behind this so okay. that we can put an end to it in our country. I'm really, really troubled that this could be happening. It, it looks like a season of anything goes in our yeah. country. This, yeah. is, this is strange. In America, there is a big demand for human organs. Hospitals are hmm. in dire need. But in this but case... it's regulated. Yes, hmm. but in this case, these ones illegal. must have been illegally <laughs> procured. <laughs> and we don't know what they need right. it for. I hear so we, we, must, need, we, we need, I hear we we need to get to the there, root of all, you know, all of this. My organs... Your own is safe. The, uh, are you sure? Yeah, at least, yes, your own is safe. It is safe. Yes. No, no, they are here. They are... My I own is safe. My own is safe. When you leave this place, <laughs> when you leave this place, take a second look at it to be sure that it is, is, is safe. No, no. And, and, except that you won't collect And, and uh, mind where you go. Hey. Uh, you know, be, be careful about the places from you to go to. Yes, just go. If you say you are going home, go straight home. Yeah. Because don't, you can't be too sure. Yes, don't <laughs> branch somewhere. Yeah. No point. No point. I'm I'm just you don't you. You don't advise you don't you as a brother. <laughs> <laughs> just go straight home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Don't the harvest. All right, all right. I don't know you so. Thank you for coming. Take your organs home. The harvest is taking What else do you have? I, 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 if it is harvested, what do you don't do? You don't do. Let, let's go. Uh, thank you for coming. Keep your organs too. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, a word they say is enough for the wise. Mm. We must pack it all in today and uh, for the week. But don't forget to join us on Sunday from 1.30 to 3.30. Two raw hours mm. of hangout uh, show. Okay. Uh, we are on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Citizen Jones. Bye bye now. <laughs>